Hey, Morgan, how are you? Hi, Louis. Good, how are you? I'm good. So wait, where are you? So I am in Cleveland, Ohio. Wow, that sounds so exotic. What's that like? <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio right now, well, you know, we're all in quarantine, so I'm just at my house. Um, but it's doing good. The weather has been getting pretty cold here, but other than that, it's okay. Really? Really cold? Wow. Yeah, I think they're expecting some, we're expecting some snow soon. Wow. So here in New York, it's the complete opposite. Like one day it'll be 70, one day it'll be 40, but it's just like up and down, which is really weird. We haven't seen snow in maybe like a year, I think. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Here, it, like the other day, it was uh, like upper 60s, and now it's kind of getting colder into the 20s almost. So Wow. All right. <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio. Very unexpected weather in Cleveland, Ohio. Wow. Well, while you say, you know, while you were in quarantine, it's so weird because we were like stuck in this little box. But here we are reaching out like we've, we've never met. And this is so cool that we're connecting, you know, virtually. And you're an artist. Yes, I know. I totally agree with you. It's so funny when you're connecting with someone online through an Instagram platform and then you finally hear their voice and see their face. It's so awesome that we're able to do this. Right? No filters. Well, kind of. I have a little bit of a filter on. <laughs> I love it. But yes, I am a mixed media collage artist. That's so cool. So every time I find like artists who make collages, it's like almost like finding a cousin or a sister or a brother, you know? And there are all these idiosyncrasies that we share and that are different. And no matter how or no matter who collages, it's always something so unique and so different. Can you tell me a little bit about your collages? Absolutely. So my collages are focused on storytelling. I know when a work is complete is when there's a story unfolding in front of me. It's almost just like a feeling where I need to stop. And I'm like, oh, there's, an, there's a story there. There's a narrative. And the materials I use are pretty unique. It's all found materials. So vintage postcards, found photos, um, magazine clippings from the 1970s. And I work on found surfaces. So discarded pieces of wood that I have, found book covers, um, even a discarded paint can. And even the paint that I use is found house paint. So family and friends who are like, uh, this house paint's been sitting in my basement. Morgan, do you want to use it? I'm like, absolutely. That's so <laughs> so cool. all my materials, um, is, they're all found, and it definitely relates to my process and the concept of storytelling and building a narrative through the work. When did you start collaging? Have you always just collaged, or did you also paint and sculpt or something like that? Yeah, great question. So I started collaging completely by accident. It's such a strange story, but I was in college in art school and one of my professors had us make a idea file, which was a handmade sketchbook. And the only requirement for it was that we had to fill the entire thing up by the end of the semester. Sounds easy. And for me, it was a day before the end of the semester and I had not filled it up at all. Like, I believe the whole, all, all the pages were blank. So I freaked out. I pulled an all-nighter. I got out all my collage materials, books, papers. I got out paint, drawing materials, things that I would even wow. find in the trash in the studio. And I just spent so long cutting things out, pasting things, painting, drawing on top of everything. Um, and really just the sole reason of filling in a sketchbook to try to get a good grade in the class. Um, and in that moment was the first time that I felt such a rush of energy and adrenaline and just joy creating. Um, and after that project happened, I just realized that that is where my love is with art making. It's just using a lot of different materials and having a really energetic practice of putting things together, assembling things. And yeah, so that was the first time that I had an experience of collaging. That's so cool. And I... Only a few years ago. Yeah. How long ago was that? So that was about th four, three or four years ago. Nice, nice. I see the wall behind you and it looks so exciting. I kind of want to reach through the screen and take like that red uh, ornament and they're like, I want to see what's in those jars over there. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. I collect a lot of things. Me too. I collect a lot of things. Me <laughs> too. Be careful. It's dangerous. But yes. you're also an educator. Yeah, so I do have my degree in art education, and 
I took a little bit of time after I graduated. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into a classroom setting right away. And I realized I actually wanted to have a little bit of a different experience before I think about being a classroom teacher. So I started working at the Museum of Contemporary Art as an engagement guide. And I've led tours there. I've created activities there for our learners at the museum. So, yeah, I, I really enjoy the work. What age that. do you what age range do you work with? That's a great question. So it really depends. I have a lot of experience leading tours and creating activities for more of a younger age group or middle school age group. But through this past six months of being at the museum, I've had more opportunities to work with teenagers and even adults in the process. Nice. Uh, right now, there's so many teachers scrounging for resources to create, to engage their kids with art. So I think right now is such an important moment for artists to kind of step up and invite people into their studios. And not necessarily for free. This is a great opportunity to find a new gig, a new profession. So it's, it's a fun place to be. So it sounds like you're already on your way. Yeah, definitely. And I um, just recently created a making activity for the museum and they're going to post it on their website soon. So it'll be uh, a, a making activity for anyone, any age. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that's going to be in the next couple of weeks that they'll post it on their website. But yeah, but it is also a great opportunity for people to share resources and information. Nice. Well, I was so drawn to your page. I've always been drawn to your page. because It's so clean and, and there's some, there's really... Uh, it's a, it's a dangerous word, but there's a beautiful aesthetic to it, right? Like, it's very clean, very, very uh, methodical. And you have a staple signature where you use your notebook as kind of your substrate or your frame even. How did that come about? Yeah, so that came about in kind of a random way. I wanted to spend more time in my studio. And I'm sure a lot of artists feel similarly. And I realized my studio is in a basement. And sometimes it's just tough to spend time here during the day, during the motions of life. Um, so I started a 100 day project for myself. So I bought a sketchbook, which is the sketchbook that usually appears in my Instagram page. And I started making these little assemblages that only lasted about maybe less than 30 seconds each day. And um, so I, I would record the video of me assembling materials together to create almost like a temporary collage onto a sketchbook page. And I would post the picture on my Instagram to kind of keep myself accountable, honestly. Yeah. And then I would kind of wipe away the materials and then start fresh the next day. Nice, nice. And do you listen to music or what do you, what's going on around you while you're working? Yeah, it really just depends. Sometimes I work in silence, which kind of sounds a little bit weird, but I, I will usually listen to some indie rock music or any type of music. Um, I'll put on a podcast once in a while. Nice. Just, yeah. Fantastic. How, when you're working, are you, like, what's your process like? Yeah, it ranges. Sometimes I do meditate and it's kind of quiet and I'm just into the process. But I listen to a lot of music and I listen to a lot of, like, sad, melodic music that because I'm usually alone, I can just, like, belt out, you know, as I'm working and it feels really uh, visceral and it's exciting. That's what I usually do. Um well, one thing that I saw that you did that I've also done, and it was so exciting to see this because I know like people are going to love this. You did a collage kit. Can yeah. you tell me about this? Absolutely. So here's a little example. I'm so not sure if cool. to see it. So I wanted to celebrate World Collage Day. I've never celebrated World Collage Day before, um, but World Collage Day is this upcoming May on May 9th. And I was trying to think about what I can do for this day. And I realized that I have so many materials in my studio. Oh my gosh, from yarn to pom-poms to 100 different types of papers that are textured. I have a whole box of old photographs and I just decided to put these little things together in a handmade wax little um, kind of pocket. And I was really thinking that only a few people would be interested. Like, I really was not sure what was going on. Um, but I decided to make five of them and then start to sell them through my Instagram page. And a couple goals of that was just to spread the awareness of World Clashé, offer people an opportunity to, to support an artist during this time, and then also spread some joy, spread some love, um, sending a little package of just fun, colorful materials that maybe those are new materials that someone hasn't worked with before. 
Um, and just yesterday was the first time that I posted the, hey, like sell like one month to World Collage Day pre-order your mini collage kit. And I got a lot of wonderful responses. There was about 20 plus people that reached out to me saying like, I'm interested. So that was really exciting to hear. That's so exciting. That's so important because I think people, when they see that you're an artist, there's a certain mystique to being an artist and they don't know how to kind of reach out and say, hey, I'm interested in your work. How can I buy this? So as an artist, we really have to create those bridges. And you've done an amazing job of doing that through these kits. So if you're listening to this and it's a month from now, you can uh, tag both Morgan and I, and you might win two packs of the collage kit, one from Morgan and one from myself. So tag us, message us, let us know. And if it's past this time, how does someone find your collage kits? Yeah, I mean, I am so up for creating these collage kits anytime. I just love the idea of spreading this little joy and material. So anyone could just message me on Instagram, direct message me, or even comment on the post still, even if it's past World Collage Day. And yeah, I would love to send them a kit. Um, And one thing that I was thinking about, Louise, this morning was I am thinking about a way that I can create a free kind of collage kit making session live for anyone who purchased the collage kit or anyone really. But I think it'd be fun to have these kits and then have the opportunity on World Collage Day on May 9th to, um, you know, click into a Zoom little chat or live on Instagram. And let's just make and create together on that day. I love that. You're creating community, you're making art and and you're making us feel connected in a time that we really need to feel connected. So that's amazing. Yes, please keep me posted. Count me in. Now, let me ask you, um, what was your first art experience that you had that you realized, oh man, I'm an artist? That's, oh my gosh, that's such a great question. I, it wasn't until I, I transferred into the art department. So I switched my major my junior year of college. So what were you studying had- before? Yeah, so I was in early education. I had a passion for working with kids and children, and I wanted to be, in my head, an early ed teacher. But I was also just an art art person. Um, and I would be sketching during my art education classes and creating artwork in my dorm. And I just realized that I love art so much, and I would walk through the art department and admire everyone's work. Um, And I just walked into my now mentor's office, who I didn't know at the time, who was the director of the art department. And I just started asking questions about, you know, what's what does it mean to be an art educator? What does the program look like? And so I immediately started to get my art education degree. And it's a dual degree with fine arts and art education. Oh, that's great. Can you tell me a little bit about your relationship with your mentor? That's such an important component in a person's development and really life. What's that relationship like? Yeah, definitely. So um, her name is Dr. Darden Bradshaw. And I just started to have a relationship with her just wondering about the art program. But um, I ended up spending three more years um, to finish my degree. And through building a relationship with Darden, but then also building a relationship with other of my art professors. And we all used, like we called them by their first name. So it was a really personal relationship. And it was just such a wonderful opportunity for me to have a space for the first time to talk to people about the art industry and art education and just being an artist in the world. I never had that opportunity before then to do that and they were just such wonderful supportive people so yeah mentorship mentorship is definitely so important absolutely that's fantastic and it's important to have lots of mentors throughout life right now can i ask you in your work there's a strong narrative of the female experience can you tell me a little bit about how you got into that getting interested in that yes definitely so I um, spent one whole summer being an assistant in one of my art professor's studio. And so we would assist her in her projects during the day. And then on the weekends or after we would be done working, we would have free studio time. So that was probably um, three years ago or four years ago. 
And that was the first time that I had the opportunity to think of what do I want to create? That's not just a project that a professor asked me to create. So it was the first time where I had an individual space to make what I wanted to. So I started pulling out old photographs of my grandmother and photographs of my mom and really thinking about the female experience. Um, and I just started doing some research on my own and creating artwork focused on my experience of living in a female body and then other people's in my family's um, experiences of being female of people that were close to me, friends, colleagues, peers. So I even at one point started doing interviews with people and I would sit them down and just ask them questions about like, what does it mean to be female? What is your experience um, being a person in the world, being a female person? Um, and through these conversations and these recording of these stories, I just realized that it was really important to create artwork about this. And that is where that stemmed. Wow. And you use a lot of vintage uh, material, right? From, from magazines from like the seventies. And for, it's so weird. I, I have a lot of them and, and I'm very wary about using them because they're so precious. But then on top of that, I go through the pages and I'm like, like, what are these messages that we're sending? All of the women are like objectified in the kitchen. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so, the preciousness of it. I, I have a big bag of probably stacks of those vintage magazines from, you know, Better Homes and Gardens. And um, I just, yeah, there was definitely a preciousness in the beginning of like, ooh, if I cut this out, it's going to be the only thing, you know, you know, here. And I can only use it once. Um, but I, I started to get over that fear a little bit and even starting to scan some images that I wanted to use that's more smart. than one. Yeah, that's that's a brilliant tip. But yeah, you have to, you have to distort to make something new something in your voice that's fantastic now let me ask you what are, what's moving you now these days in, in this awkward little cocoon moment what are you reading what are you watching what's going on um that's a great question i would say what is moving me is just human connection and kindness although mm. we're in a space right now that we're quarantined and we're you know told to stay inside the moments of connection, whether that be through social media, um, but also just through waving at neighbors and um, starting to just, I don't know, I th feel like we're all in this at, at this time and there is a need to want to connect with another person. So what's moving me right now is honestly just going on walks in my own neighborhood and seeing a lot of people that I would normally not see and just waving to them, you know, saying, Hey, how's it going? How are you doing? Um, going to the local parks around me and they're crowded, not in a way where, you know, we're keeping our six feet, yeah. but there's people there. And it's, it's really nice to see people in my community come out of their homes and us just, you know, there's just a feeling and um, I've just experienced a lot of kindness and that is really what's moving me right now. That's amazing. Yeah. I think it's really interesting. Um, in New York, everyone's in quarantine, but there's still a lot of people out. It's really serious. But I feel that because we live in a world that everyone's in such a rush, and now that you have this mandatory excuse to stay home, people are like, oh, my God, finally, I get to go enjoy my park. I get to go take a walk. Like, you know, that's not something that was encouraged or part of our culture, really. So it's nice to see people, um, you know, reaching out in that way. But, yeah. Yeah, it has definitely changed um, my mindset about going on more walks and going outside and spending more time reflecting and um, being being with myself but also um, yeah taking those those walks or going to the local parks like I think after when this is all done um, I would want to have that a part of my routine still absolutely where would you go travel after this oh well I I had a trip planned to teach English in Prague in the Czech Republic um, and I was supposed to leave May in the beginning of May and I had to um, cancel that trip for now. So that is still a part of my goal um, of being just a person before I get a full time job teaching. I want to teach English in Prague for a year and have an experience of traveling and just getting to know the world a little better. So that will be postponed. I'm sure I will go 
Um, maybe even next year, I'm not going to put a set date on when I'm going to go, but the program that I'm working with is really flexible as, as to us being comfortable when we want to, you know, take that leap. That's fantastic. Oh, it's going to be, what a great opportunity that'll be. Yeah. What about you? Do you have any travel plans thinking outside of this situation? (laughs) I also had, um, plans in June for my birthday. My husband and I were going to go to Paris and, and a few other places, but that's been canceled for now. But uh, I think I want to go to Mexico after Temporary this. Canceled. Temporary canceled. Temporarily canceled. Um, but I think after this, I really just want to go to the beach. <laughs> you know, I just want to go to the beach and hang out with monkeys or something. I don't know. But <laughs> I don't know. But, well, Morgan, thank you so much for chatting with me and checking in. And I'm so excited to see you on Instagram. And I will add your link to the show notes so people can follow you, get a kit, and keep in touch with you. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me and spreading the love. I love it. And uh, yeah, have a great rest of your day, Luis. I look forward to it. Ciao, Morgan. Bye. Awesome. How did that feel? <laughs>